Yes, sir. Big Sweet checking in. Another session is uh, trapping up the trap house, man. You know how we get it popping, man. Get into the money, man. Got this, 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 this young in here, man. He been doing his thing. He got this crazy ass voice and this crazy song going crazy in the streets, man. Shorty Scott checking in. What's up, my dog? What's going on? Pleasure to be here. Honored to be here. So where did this voice come from, man? Like, what made you decide to to do this? That's that's what's distinct with you. Matter of fact, let them know the song first of all. That oh yeah, the uh, rocking the car again in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was one of one of my first songs that really got people in tune. So so what was the process of that? Like what like what made you be like you know what I'm about to go in here and just <laughs> so it's like I rock with Thug and play with Cardi Heavy. So it's like I'm listen me. I'm just never been like a nigga that just wanna. I mean, I, I can't cuss. Can't you good? Go ahead. I, I've never been the type of person that just I take what I see, but I don't want to do it just like them. So I was mm. like, how do I take it to another level with my own style? And that's how the process started. And I was recording myself, so there was no auto tune, no nothing. So that whole that whole song in Carnegie is no auto tune. No, auto it's just you using my voice with some reverb. So you can do the voice right now. Yeah. Let me hear it. You can't say it's on the spot. You don't want to do it? Okay, I'll just make sure. Cause I'm like, cause I, I tried to I try to sing it with it. I was like, I don't know if I can do it. You fast. Yeah, nah, it's just that's just how it sound out of auto-tune. That's how a lot of people still sound without the auto-tune, but I ain't know I ain't really know about the auto-tune nothing until I started recording this project. So now it sound more complete. You still hear the hobby, but it sound more like normal. Right. Yeah. So so like so what's your process of like your creativity? I mean you coming a little different. You know what I'm saying? Carnegie's in, in Atlanta. Ain't too many cats rocking Carnegie's in Atlanta. Thanks. You know what I'm saying? Like I think the last uh that that outcast era, you know what I'm saying, was really on the Carnegie's, the dressing different, uh where I where, where I feel like where Atlanta came from. Yeah. I feel like we just recently got overly trapped out where it's like trap, 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 trap. And the creativity has has pretty much left a little bit. I mean, not to not to diss anybody, but just like coming from knowing like Atlanta and being in love with the city, mm -hmm. you got goody mob. You know, CeeLo Green, the big ass glasses. You got, you know what I'm saying, Andre 3000, you know what I'm saying, wearing purple wigs and, you know what I'm saying, wrist bracelets and painted fingernails and big boy. Like, it was on, they was on a whole nother time and ahead. They was way ahead of their time. Mm. So are you, are you, are you like attempting to bring that back? Is that your particular style or, or what? Yeah, I ride with the formal style. I ride with it just like, I be, people I be around, it's like, it just look different. Like, I be the only one rocking formal shit all the time. So it's like, I rock with it. So growing up in Atlanta, what side of town? South Fulton. Okay, South South Fulton. Yeah. What was it like growing up in South Fulton? Not Fulton where they the prostitutes at. That, that part of Fulton? You know it's prostitutes on Fulton now. Don't try to act like you ain't been young enough like mama. Why is this lady walking up on, on the street half neck with her booty out? No, yeah. What's going on? Man, nah, like when my life when I was over there on South Fulton, like from all the way up to seventh grade, then I, I moved to Jonesboro. But I, during the summers, I was always on Campton. Okay. I, my mom used to have to work, so I just had to stay on Campton all the time. So that's how I know everybody over there. So Campton Road, dress informal. Yeah. Like, how do you how, how do you push yourself to be different? Because, you know, sometimes I feel like a, a lot of young cats, they get involved in just, like, caring what people think. You know what I'm saying? Because kids can be really judgmental. You know what I'm saying? They get, they, they're really harsh. Like, kids are mean as fuck, actually. Nah. You know what I'm saying? So what made, what made you just be like, you know what? Hey, this me, you got to deal with it. I'm just, because I know it's like, Long as people respect me, like I ain't really tripping what nobody say. Like I know nobody gonna disrespect me, so it's like, so you whoop some ass. Yeah, like in your in like, your formal clothes. It's, it's yeah. Don't play with you. It's like one of them. So it's like long as I'm me, like I ain't doing no crazy shit. So it's like I'm wearing formal clothes. Ain't nothing right. crazy about that. You feel me? It's just different because where we at. Right. But like you feel me? It's not nothing crazy to me. Right. Yeah. So Cardi B mm. tweeted the lyrics to your song. How did you when? How did you find out about that? Did you, I mean did it pop up on your feed or you were just like? Somebody hit you like Cardi just. Everybody kept sending it to me. It was like check, check Twitter, check Twitter, check. I was like, okay, for sure. Checked it. I was like, I was shocked. Cause I, I had a feeling that she knew, but I ain't know until that moment. Right. Yeah. So. And how how many tweets did you get after that? And how how fast did that song just like shoot up there? Um, it started going crazy when she tweeted. Cause then she made a she made a video, she made a video to it, and then tweeted that. So she tweeted twice. That's when it really took off. Cause she went viral. And she did that little that Playboy, that Playboy collab. Uh -huh. And the way she introduced it was, was with the song. Wow. Yeah. That's hard. Did, I mean, did your heart start rushing like beating? You just knew at that time like I'm out of here, cause we <laughs> we out of here, cause yeah. we out of here. <laughs> Who'd you call? My mom. What your mama say? She was like, she was shocked, cause it's like she huge, like her to be huge. She was like, 
we knew it was a possibility, but we, you know, you, you never know. You feel me? So right. When we seen it, it was like, it's crazy. She really know now. We know that she really know now. So what did your mama think of the song? She was just, she she loved whatever I do. So. Oh, she one of them mamas like, baby, you just, you amazing. <laughs> you can, you can, you can sit on the bench the whole basketball game. You killed it out there. She <laughs> yeah. one of them mamas. She one of them. Oh, no, no, no. Not with the sports. Like, okay, not with the sports. On, sitting on the bench. <laughs> <laughs> but now she support me, though. As far as creativity, does she ever like give you input or, or tell you like don't cuss, don't do this, don't do that? Or nah, she she just be listening to it. She be trying to ignore the cussing, but she just she just happy that I'm doing what I want to do. That's tight. So tell me about this offset. Of course, Cardi B and you know, offset all together and married, you know what I mean? But how did that collab happen? Um my um one of my some of my teenage had told him about it and he was like he wanted to do it. So we made it happen and he at first, we were just going to do a verse, but he was like, come out there. So we went out of L.A., met him, and sat in the studio and recorded with him. That's hard. What was that experience like, considering you was used to recording at home? Like, you <laughs> yeah, know what I'm saying? Like, oh. Was that the first time you was in a big studio? Yeah. In a, especially and in L.A., yeah, that was, that was, that was new to me. What, what, what was you, what was, how, how hard was your, fast was your heartbeat? Like, that has to be a little bit intimidating, like, you know what I'm saying? Just to be in the cover, because I record, when I used to do music, like, the end of the, my career, and just now, I don't even go to big studios. I record everything at home. Like, I feel like, you feel better, you feel better your creativity, like, you even doing something weird in the microphone, you ain't got to worry about nobody, like, questioning what you're doing. Like, just let me finish, bro. Let me finish. I'm an artist. I'm creating. So, what was that experience like? How hard, how fast was your heartbeat? Like, um, I was good. I didn't have to record nothing on the spot. He just, we already had it up. He just had to record his verse. But I was in there just like, dang, it's crazy. It's just, you know, you see somebody on, see on the screen, you see him in person the first time. It's like, dang, we really here. Mm. And, he, and he did it. Like, he just nodded out real quick. Like, did, did that inspire you to rap? Like, because, like I said, when I was coming up, like doing music, I was, I mean, I was sitting in the studio with Wayne and Future. And, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. To see them boys go, it's like, you got to, you got to jump in there and, Jump that rope if you can't if you can't get in there dance you might as well get out the room. Fast, fast. Now that's fast. You think I'm playing? I really was like a little kid watching every Atlanta song that came out. I know them. I'm telling you, like when that shine, I used to have it on When I first seen, I was like, I knew, I knew you. I had dreads then. Yeah, like I knew your. No face. wait, did I have dreads when shine? I don't think I had dreads when shine. I don't. I know you had a hat. Yeah. On. So, so you hip to that uh, girls going wild too? Yeah, I was like I was that Atlanta kid. Just anything that came, I was on YouTube, just looking. Everything. I wasn't really tuned into the world music. Right. It was just yeah. everything that happened in Atlanta. Yeah. That's dope. So how does it's, it's weird? Like, hey, man. It's like, it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. It's crazy. Man. I appreciate it, man. You made my day, big dog, for sure. Appreciate you know what I'm saying? It. But I definitely have to salute to you and everything you're doing. Just, I want to just say, like, was, I had some advice. Just stay creative and stack your money and put your money in the bank and don't get go, don't go get rich and go to jail. Okay. <laughs> Cause I think that's like typical. No cap. And stay out the beef. Cause uh -huh. a lot of rappers, it seemed like, the attack on rappers right now is like I remember at one point rappers were untouchable. Like you couldn't you couldn't touch them. Now it's like rappers dying faster than regular cats in the streets doing dirt. No cap, it's touchable now, so you got to play it smooth and stop. I think people like beefing on the internet for no reason. I think that's because you can be tough. Yeah, it's different when they beef in your face. Yeah, it's like people want people to know. I never got that. It's, so, it's weird to me. I don't know. So do you think it's a social media thing? Like, cause you're a young dude. So you teach me something. Like it's definitely a social what's media. What's the thing? Thing. Like, what's the whole I gotta show my guns on in, in Instagram, I gotta show money stacked upside my head. Is that like a what what is that? Like I don't It's like uh like it's it's music. Like Chief Keith made it look like art. Mm. It was art to people. So when they doing it, they wasn't thinking like that. They were just having fun doing what living their everyday life. And the kids got influenced, and these kids that grew up in the same way, they grew up. So it's like it's the wave. They think it's the wave. So it's like just like I could grew up on like Outkast and and Goody Mob, and I just want to bombs over a bag that they want to oh, oh, <laughs> ride through New York, come to shoot New Jersey up. Okay, okay. Twin Society, talk to me about that. It's official. Like you gonna hear it's like I got in the studio with this producer named Fish. We got we locked in like. It sound more serious, like it's like it's like you know how like I don't want to compare nobody, but like we, I'm finally learning how to. I'm getting here with auto tune now, mm. so now it sound more like an instrument and stuff like that. It sounds smooth, real smooth. It's not crazy. It's it's gonna be crazy, but it's not crazy crazy. You know what I'm saying? So what's the process like of now? Be like being in a big studio and recording, and just being able to like, you know what I mean? Like do what you gotta do and do what you want to do. I was at the big studio one time and I met an engineer at um, Five Star. And I met him. I was like, how much you charge to pull up? 
and I recorded everything in the house. I'm still in the house. I just have him pull up with the equipment, and we. So at your house or your mama's house? My spot. Okay. Yeah. Dude, but you started recording your mama. Yeah, I started recording my mama's spot. So is it a bedroom? Is it like a you got a closet? You got the closet junk? Cause you ain't got had that no more. You could just a kitchen table. Kitchen table, bed. I just had. I was in the um. She had like this little living room, and we used to just set it up right there and just record in the closet, put a sock on the mic, and record in the closet. Thugging. See, that's what I like because I just feel like if you want to do something in life, you're going to do it by any means necessary. So a lot of people make excuses of saying they want to be somebody, but they don't want to put the work in. So that's even more, you know what I'm saying, salutable for you to say like, yo, sock on the mic, like, let's go. I just what I want to do. I can't, might not be able to afford the big studio, but I'm going to work with what I got. For sure. I ain't mad. No cap. Any features on Twin Society besides the offset? Um, I got a, I got two of them. One is this, um, my partner named Destin L'Oreal. He, he hard. And I got a rare feature from um, Ken Carson. Mm. Yeah. That's hard. Yeah, it's one of his only ones. Like, it's rare. That's hard. One girl in the world that you got to have. Like, I got to have her. Like, seeing, like, Lil Wayne. Remember how Lil Wayne loved Trina? Yeah. Who your Trina? Um, my Trina might be... Come on with it. Come on with it. Shoot your shot, bro. Come on, youngin. Shoot your shot. Don't be smiling. Put your head down. Ain't gonna lie. My Trina was... JT. From for City Girls? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, not no more, though. Okay. <laughs> Wait, why not? What happened, bro? Once somebody get on, I'm cool. I'm okay, on, you I'm one cool. of those. You ain't yeah. you ain't messing with nobody, girl. So yeah. so who, who who next on the list? I don't know. I might pull. I might pull a yay. Get, get a superstar or something. Okay. <laughs> Addison Ray or something. You could do it. What, what, say, that, say that name again. Speak it in. Speak it. Like Addison Ray or something. Come on, man. Know, something like that one. They want his time. Yeah, 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 yeah. We just shot that shot. It's going down, man. <laughs> Look, Shorty Scott checking in, man. Twin Society. When we, when we expecting it out? Tonight at 12. Mm, it's out now. Sure. Go get that. It's going down, man. Support my youngin', dog. Southside checking in, man. Big Stewie. Yes, Lord. Trapping out the trap house. Let's go.